Can you guys hear me? Yes, that's good. There's, there's a lot of people in this moderation panel. Oh, I'm a very soft-spoken person. I'll try to talk a bit louder at my computer. Yes, they're lovely crane paintings. I have no idea, like one day they were just here. Um, I guess a funny fact is uh, my mom actually did shave this wallpaper with my fursuit trimming shaver. Um, yeah, so there's that. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a different um, setup here. Okay, so the other camera finally turns off. Wolf, wolf, okay. So does anybody have any first few questions? Let's see. Get this off. What's the best sewing machine for fur? Oh. Oh. Man, I don't actually use it's all I do all most of my sewing by hand. So that's not really a question for me. Um, they do have these really nice sewing machines that are about a grand a piece that sews for like on an industrial level, and that'd be something I'd want to get, but you need an actual table and space for it and the money and we don't have that yeah like if you have like a fursuit part that you want to hold up and be like why is this happening that'd be good um i have some heads in the back How do you measure your fursuit parts for correct portions on the face with different parts like ears and muzzle? Um, I have a head dummy that uh, you can get off Amazon for 20 bucks and I just build around that and it's pretty much set up for like a standard head. Um, my head's smaller than it actually, I have, I have a tiny head. Um, a singer heavy duty should probably work. Uh, just make sure not to run anything longer than maybe an inch and a half pile through it. Uh, it does get stuck. We have a heavy duty and I can't even run a certain air. I can't run certain minkies through it because they get stuck up in there. Make a nice little curtain stitch, I guess. It's unfortunate. Um, yeah, so the head, you can measure your own head and then measure it to the actual head piece that you get. I don't, I, it's actually the shark is wearing it right now. There's a person in there. Um, that's, I just build over that. Uh, the resin base is I use a harness that makes it a, a harness that makes it's adjustable. So I don't like, be like, I'm selling this head and it only fits me. And then I have to find somebody who has my head. Measuring body and picking. For Brother Flounder, is that for semi-realistic or toony? Either one. Building a duct tape dummy, um, it depends on the maker that you commission or what you're doing. I made a 
septic dummy for myself once and I don't ever recommend it because I basically had this side right here like not covered in tape as I was trying to slack tape on myself. I don't recommend that. That's why Tide looks so funny in her bodysuit. Yeah. And okay, so basics of making a fursuit. Um, you're gonna need two stitches for hand. You're gonna need to know the blanket or whip stitch. And then a ladder stitch is always nice to know because it's like your finishing stitch uh, for like hiding bits and stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll get to that one next. I have ADHD and you guys aren't helping me. <laughs> okay, so I just use a duct tape dummy. I used to use plaster of Paris and it wasn't like very effective at all because then I would have to like wrap it in tape and or um, muslin or muslin. It's like a cloth cheap fabric that you can wrap around and do stuff. Um, predominantly used in I think my sister uses it for cosplay. That's why we have it. But uh, plaster of Paris was messy. It was a lot of storage space. Sometimes the pieces would break because I would kick them. Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of room, so everything kind of stacks up. So I really like the duct tape dummy because I can just like flatten them with like a key darts in areas, flatten them and store them nicely. And it's usually like quite like perfect match. I think except in the area of the feet because feet are weird. And let's not discuss feet, they're weird. They're weird. Picking eyes, I just whatever eyes you think look good. I mean, look at these eyes we got. I didn't make those eyes. I had somebody else make them. I was like, uh, no. Um, the shark eyes are creepy, actually. Creepy shark eyes. But yeah, um, I think uh, Dracanic Knight has some really good semi-realistic eyes, and there's like about 50 of them that you can go over. So, design. Please don't ask me about design. I just I just do whatever. I just like I have these furs on hand and I just put them in the spot. That's sometimes they happen. Like um Faraday was I actually bought that. That was like an impulse purchase adopt. And then this is a Pop Tart bird. It looks like the wildberry pop tart. Okay, so what's next? Yeah, sharks are goofy. These are creepy. Okay, so uh, washing a fursuit head, uh, you should just spot clean it, honestly. Um, if you wear a bocado and you air it out, like every time you use it, you don't like tuck it away with all your sweat in it after you use it. Because I use my fursuits for like hours on end. Um, they spend most of the night upside down airing out, if that makes any sense. And if you have a balclava, you can just take this, because it, it sucks most of your sweat up, you can just take that, throw it in the sink at like a convention and wash it again. I actually have four balclavas, one for each day, and I've had roommates try to use one of them. I always give them a dirty one, because I'm just like, you didn't pack, this is not my problem. I'm not your mom. Here, you can have the one that I washed. So, um, you just spot clean it. Some of these you could probably submerge. You can't submerge this one. The one right directly behind me that you can barely see, and this one you can't submerge because they have electronics in them. I would have to take them out. I could probably submerge them, but they don't really need it because I use the Boklava and I do the upside down with the isopropyl water spray. I don't even use scents anymore because I have a refresher pack, which is like dryer sheets to put in later. But yeah, I've washed fursuits before, but I'm really up on the whole cleanliness thing so they don't smell funky. I mean, Tide smells like oil still, so there's that. Washing it. Adjustable fursuit heads with moving jaws. Okay, so all of these 
have moving jaws. Some of them have better range than others. And like the shark is just how it was made. And then I put so many teeth on it, it kind of like flops. And if you have a big enough head, it is a moving jaw. I don't have a big enough head. So I have to like grab back here on the thing to move it, but that's how it works. Yeah. Take this. I don't know if you can see this. This is an adjustable harness. It's a 3D printed by Twin Blue Chimera. And it's actually bolted into the resin on this base. And it is an adjustable strap system. And it's rated for 22 and up uh, for a circumference at age. I have a 21 and three quarters head, so it's not really the ideal for me. And I realized that a bit too late on the head directly behind me. But this is adjustable. Um, I don't really adjust them much to get them just to fit my base so I can work on them. That's really up to the client to like adjust it so it fits them. And then also I usually include extra padding because you can't really tell because I use black padding inside here. There we go. Yeah, you can't see the padding. Oh, God. So extra padding, there's, it's two things. It's padding and like a firm fit. If you don't have either one, opening the jaw is gonna do one of two things. It's either gonna pull the entire head down or it's just not gonna work. It's not even gonna open. You're just gonna pull the head down. It, that's unfortunately, it's, it's really hard to get a moving jaw on things that aren't really set up for moving jaws. Um, Faraday is a moving jaw. Faraday was furred by Sammy Smiles. I just set it up. You have to see inside here. Faraday is set up on a hat. So it is adjustable. Um, I recommend people who don't like the snapbacks use just elastic once they figure out their setting. But if you can see, there's elastic up here. It's going all the way around the jaw, making a bit of a sling, just like the actual jaw muscle in anatomy, which I believe is the masseter or the temporalis. I think it's both of them, actually. So he's got a moving jaw. Uh, it's, and it's not like a wild amount, but it, it's there. Um, so you can do foam, basically any foam thing that you can set up on a hat or even bucket. I've seen moving jaw bucket heads. It just, they need like a little extra part for your chin. And that's really hard to do for like a commissioner though, because people don't really measure their head quite right. I had a client say uh, from here to here was 14 inches. And I'm like, are you, are you a horse? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's gonna stay over here. Okay, adjustable hands. Oh yeah, the carrying for a fursuit is actually pretty easy, um, especially if you use Under Armour because then that's half the care right there because you can just throw that stuff in the wash and wash it clean, done. Um, let's see, Kiwi Fox. Yeah, I have a link in my profile that goes to like some other stuff. I think I have a Weebly fursuit wash thing linked. I'm not sure. It could be in another. I could have just, just, no, you know what? I didn't put it there because I just answered a, a, a client reached out and said, how do you wash my fursuit? And then I gave them this information. So basically you can either use a tub or you can use a front loader. You can use a washing machine that has an agitator but I would make sure not to do anything long because what you don't want happening is something to get stuck in the agitator and then it like tightens so it like rip all your seams and stuff. That's that's not a good outcome, but you can put, definitely put, depending on your maker or if you made them yourself and you know you didn't use any paint, you can definitely put hand paws and sleeves and stuff inside the wash. 
you just don't use hot water. And you can use, I use wool light. People tell me not to use wool light. Um, they, there's people that make fursuit wash that you can get. Um, I've actually just used hand soap before and bar soap. So I'm probably not the best person of what specific soap, if like any soap works, as long as it's like not bleach or, you know, rather harsh soaps that you would use for like oil and stuff, like you know, that. Uh, so you can put it in the bathtub. Um, you can also use the dry, <laughs> you can use the dryer, but please, 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 please test the air dry only part of your dryer, see if it's actually air dry, because um, I've heard some things where they say they've used it and then they ruin their fur suit, but like, if you have like a swatch of fur, like soak it and then put it in the dryer and use air dry, see if it actually dries, because that's, sometimes it's like, oh yeah, it's air dry, but then they heat the air, so you get plastic clumps of grossness out. Um, also an extra spin cycle on the wash would really help with the whole water thing. Um, and you have to support your fur parts when they're wet because they're heavier and you could rip seams that way. Some sort of template in a full body suit. You actually just color straight on the duct tape dummy. Like it's like you do the duct tape dummy, your client sends it to you. I air them out because they smell terrible and I have a problem with strong scents. And then I just go in and like color, like if it's a fox, I color the uh, from here up black and then be down black. Usually they're supposed to put where they want their tail. I have a lot of people just not opt and I just, I just assume that they want it right above the butt crack. So uh, sometimes I can find the butt crack on the duct tape dummy, which always has me a little bit wondering. I'm guessing it's their friends that were doing something like, oh, I'm making your butt crack. Yeah. Whatever, you gotta find some joy somewhere. Yeah, the Pop-Tart brew does not taste that great, honestly. It's, it's resin, so it's kind of crunchy. Didn't help me. The paint, was it was it dry brushed or was it airbrushed? Um, the shark actually has airbrushing on it. That's how I hurt my hand. But um, I have a head that's like, how old is it? It's as old as Tide. Six years now. And it's all airbrushed. And I've spot cleaned it and stuff. And the airbrush is fine. Uh, you just don't have, just don't use paint thinner and or nail polish remover and or rubbing alcohol on it and you should be fine with acrylic paints um sometimes if it's crusty like the paint job is crusty where it's not like been brushed into the fur and it's just kind of sitting on top of the fur like like a top layer it will come out because it wasn't put on quite right it, yeah that's going to come out like I don't know what to say about that with the, oh, eyes, I see eyes. Yeah, I sealed my eyes, but I don't actually think that does anything, honestly, because I use the spray and I also have a Liquitex paint on stuff, but I don't think it actually really takes on the eyes because the eye fabric is flexible and that stuff doesn't really handle flexible that well so for like uh, fursuit eyes um if, if you can't get information from your maker just err on the side that they are not sealed and cannot handle water because I, I just i mean there's some people like i think it's witchcraft they just put it in the thing and they wash it and the eyes are fine i'm like how'd you do that i haven't figured that out yet I think it's some sort of seal or like probably a varnish or something that I don't have access to. It's probably what it is. Yeah, new eyes. From day to day to another con. Um, you just smell your first suit. Like, I'm probably looking at old cons now. Spot cleaning would be like, let's say, this has happened not on this suit, but on another suit. I was eating ice cream cake at a party and I got 
ice cream cake on my fursuit sleeve because I just dragged it through. And so I went to the bathroom at that event. I just washed it in the sink with my own soap, the soap that they had from the dispenser at, at the party place and water. And I washed that area. So that area was like soaked and then I like dried it pathetically and I avoided the hand things because they blow hot air. Um, but that would be considered a spot clean. Normally people use their fursuit spray or an isopropyl mix to like really get it clean. And I did wash it later when I got home. And it smelled, it smelled like cake. I was like, I don't know if I want to get, I don't know if I want to get rid of the smell. It smells like cake. This is so much better for this suit that usually smells like oil. So that's spot cleaning when you find a spot for something where a ch child with sticky hands touches you or you crouch down for a fursuit picture and your tail just dips itself into the gutter and now you have gutter water on your tail and it's black. Or, or if you're my friend and you put your tail too low and it drags in the dirt and it's a white tip and it needs to be cleaned. That's how a spot clean is like a small clean, like usually armpits, spot clean the armpits and then the groin for the bodysuit. Um, and then probably the neck for the head since it's sweaty. I've been thinking about doing an EVA head for foam for the jaw, or actually for the whole head, but I haven't been able to get there yet. It's just, I picked up way too many personal projects. It's like, oh, I want to make this, I want to make this, I want to make this, I want to make this. And then I had like eight projects. And I was like, I have to get, I either have to sell them or finish them. And I always feel like selling them is, uh, quitting? Uh, Mom didn't raise a quitter, but then there are some projects where I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm, I'm done. I'm been done. Okay. When should you wash? Oh, I mean, you could if you'd use your Under Armour, you could get away with several uses without having it smelling fusty but it really depends like i sweat out my feet like that's feet and groin that's where i sweat the most so i can get away with it because i don't really smell like onions so the armpit i guess is where the onion production is but um if you're using your under armor i don't see unless you're like like my uh i have a friend who just drenches himself I, his first suit's moist too. It's like, you should probably wash that every time you wear it. And he's like, no, I, I just stick dryer sheets in it and it's good. And it smells bad. It, it smells like somebody had Febreze and they tried to cover up something. And I just like, I don't, I can't say anything really. It's unfortunate. When it comes to throwing your head, Okay, that's yeah. So I use the taxidermy method where I just sew everything to one thing, unless it's like the shark there where it has like pieces that are like sticking way out. I ladder stitch that in. So the fin was already on before I put the rest of the fur on. Um, but I just shove it on, like I put it on first and see how it looks and then that's alteration stage because sometimes you need to put darts around the eye because there's too much skin or the jaw one of the jaws is like attached here and the other jaw is like back here so i've like fixed that but um and somehow the fur was too short to go over the completely over the eyes did you do a duct tape dummy oh god sweat everywhere yeah, you probably need to wash it at the end of the con then. Um, well, you can always get a partial. I think partials are pretty amazing and versatile because then you can totally put a normal outfit up and like actually make a legit character with the outfits. And you could have your character have these different outfits that go with like different moods or whatever. Okay, so I don't know. I've never heard of 
stirring it slowly. Yeah, you know what? I do the duct tape down and usually without fail, the uh, neck part is always kind of wonky. And I'm just like, this is probably just me drawing the stuff on wonky and then following what I drew because it usually hangs down here. I just, nowadays when I do the hood, I just add like two or three extra inches at the bottom and be like, I'll fix it when I sew it up later. So I'll come through and like make a nice scoop. But, um, oh. So Limbo Rack wants to talk. Is that what this is? Yeah, so you could probably just do the head first. If you're, if it's a bucket head, but I assume it's gonna be a bucket head. Um, if you just do, you could probably just do the face. And if you have like the edges that are extra fuzzy, like here. I actually have no idea how she furred this, but that's fine because I didn't want to fur it. Um, this stuff here, if this is on the face, you can actually ladder stitch something in back here and it'll be like completely hidden. So because of the way the ladder stitch is. So you could do the face and then you could come back and maybe do the top of the hood and then later come back and do the neck portion. Maybe that will help. Sometimes it's just so much stuff and you're pulling and it gets glued here, like part of the thing gets glued there. Once a tail pad things like a tail and someone wants bigger than their bike. I don't do floor dragging tails, um, mostly because I am someone who occasionally steps and trips on them and like falls over and then I get in trouble for stepping on something that was on the floor. They get upset at me. It's like, but you have a floor dragger. You should expect this. I also drag my foot. So I feel like floor draggers are just uh, not safe for people. We're in fursuits. We can't see anything below here. Like, why are you doing this? So I don't actually personally take those as commissions. Also, I don't really have space. I made a three meter tail, three meter long tail, and I had to store it unstuffed because I have no space. Um, using the duct tape trick. Yeah, so that's that I don't make long tails because I feel like it's, 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 it's not a safe thing. It's, I mean, I see them just carried around with them. I don't, I don't understand the appeal. It's like you're dragging around 20, 25 pounds of polyfill behind you. I guess work. Okay, this one, duct tape trick that has to do a two man. Uh, no, you could do it yourself. I don't recommend it. I've done it myself because I didn't have anybody. I went over to a fur place and he basically stuck two pieces of tape on me. He's like, oh, you're good. And I actually don't associate with that person anymore. But yeah, you you want at least two people working, two or three. Um, once this COVID stuff is no longer a thing, I would recommend like a, offering to do a pizza party for your friends and buy them a pizza. pizza whatever whatever fast food something and then have them wrap you in tape because I've done it myself and my fursuit has unusual hanging points. I have a dropped crotch for no reason other than I guess I couldn't pad much. I don't know I don't really know because I did it myself. Um, and so the legs are all dropped too. So I have like a knee that's like too low. Yeah, and it doesn't actually fit. So actually you'll see me dancing and I'll be doing this because I'm trying to get it back on my shoulders because it, it just doesn't fit. It It's too long, <laughs> made it for someone taller than me. Um, I did actually do a commission where the guy locked his knees and kind of like passed out mid taping. So I just decided to err on the side of caution and cut him out, but I was missing a quarter panel of the upper side. And so on the inside of his suit, there's, it's all really nice. And then this quarter panel is like all sorts of weird because I was trying to match from the other side and it didn't work. I thought, yeah, oh, I could just flip it, right? No, it didn't work out that way. So I had like three or four panels of fur kind of like meshed together. You can't see, it looks nice on the outside, but you, but in the inside is kind of like a hot mess, but uh, he understands that's 
that was actually his doing because he locked his legs. I, I even told him, don't do that. Um, I'm not sure. Some, sometimes I feel like you say something and, and they agree, but they don't actually understand what you're saying. I think that's what it was. Oh yeah, like a uh, like a digi grade pattern. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's 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 extra stuff. Hey, this is Flounder. Oh. It looks like we got a couple okay. of video requests, so I'm going to put those, or at least one, okay. I'm going to put him on. Okay, Limbo Jack. Let's see. Limbo Jack, you are getting the option to share. It takes a minute once you pop up, you have that bit of yeah, yeah you need to share this and that. Fresh. So we shall see. Um, while he is coming it. on, um, yeah, I, I just, um, I, that was kind of funny about the floor dragging tails. I definitely get that, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, but um, if it was a normal do tail, I do not have one. I've got a long raccoon tail that's close, but it does not floor dragging behind me. It goes right down to my ankles. Yeah, I've like tripped, I've like fallen over these things and then I yeah. get in trouble for it. I'm just like, this isn't my fault. You left that on the floor. I actually think it's a, a, a disability hazard for anybody with disabilities. I've seen people in wheelchairs and stuff get stuck on them too. It's like, this is, I mean, it's great to have, you can sleep on it and stuff, but I don't know if it's a convention worthy item. It seems like another reason to have a handler if you're going to fursuit mm -hmm. at a convention with the limited visibility and all that. I mean, yes and no. If you have a tail dragger, you should probably have a handler um, just to hold your tail, right? But um, I've seen a lot of them. Some like I have a friend who has like a belt loop on the tip of her, so she can like use a uh, D clip and clip it to her belt, so it's like wrapped around her, so it's not on the floor. But it seems it seems like. Um, I guess it's a statement. It's like statement fursuits. We have those. We have people who make statements with their fursuits. Um, it's just a thing. Uh, I don't know if it doesn't directly impact me as another fursuiter, but floor dragging tails are one of the things. Also, people sitting on the floor. I, like a con, we have all this chair space. We have the zoo where you can meet people, and you're sitting on the floor in the main walkway. And you're going to get stepped on like that's just going to happen as soon as you sit on the floor you should like sign a waiver i know i'm probably going to get stepped on by a fursuiter looks like there's a question from azzy in the chat while we're waiting on on him to the other person to join oh, the digi yes suit? <laughs> okay i get i get their leg i asked them to com combine their foot with the duct tape dummy. The problem there is sometimes they don't, so I get a separate cast. I try to get them to mark the ankle at least so you can like make a Franken leg. But if this is for you personally, you can just do it yourself. And actually, if you have your foot already made, just put it on, put the extra wedge that you need for the uh, carpels of the foot in front of the ankle but after the toes if that makes any sense it's like you know it's going to be like feet here swoop up and then your leg so you're going to want that little like wedge because that actually helps the illusion much better and then from the wedge on the back side you're going to need another triangle um for the hawk but um you can just make you can measure your own legs if it, this is for yourself measure your own legs and come up with these little paper things and like, I guess, stick your leggy out real far and like put it, the paper on your leg to like measure it. Let's see if I have some paper here. It's gonna be art. It's art. So I got a leg here. And you're gonna wanna make these little paper shapes and then figure out like the width to your leg and stuff it's actually a lot of math also it's fair like two important a lot of people leave out the wedge in front of the foot and also i'm gonna just be straight with you guys if you don't have a butt you're gonna need to add butt padding to make the illusion work otherwise it's gonna look like you have knee tumors but that's okay 
because not a lot of people look at first suits from the side. A long tail go out. Yeah, I'm sorry if I stepped on your fursuit and you ripped a seam. I'm really sorry. Um, you probably, if it, if it was me in specific, you should have, uh, I would fix that. I'd be like, oh, that right, here, let me use my two threads of black and white to fix that. As the lawyer, sometimes for Megaplex, I just want to say that Megaplex is not responsible for any damage that may be caused by you having a floor dragging fursuit and someone stepping on your tail because there are 4,000 people there. Yeah, and it's on the floor. She signed a waiver. If I sit on the floor, I will get stepped on. If I drag something on the floor, it may get stepped on. Um, did I answer the DigiGrade question? Oh, oh, fursuit beaks? I just buy resin bases because I like the clicky, clicky, clack, clack. I'm like addicted to that. So I don't use any i've seen people use foam and then cover them with fleece the fleece pills though so if you don't like the pilly look um i guess vinyl or you could use warbla if you have a nice surface you could probably just heat up some warbla and lay it over because it's got like a clay like consistency so you could just wrap it and be done Looks like there were a couple of questions. Um, I'm Megan asked, and I missed the first part of that, but um, uh, modeling sculpting fursuit bird beaks, was that the question we just had? I thought yeah, it, with it the popped out. Bird, I thought yeah. you were talking about claws for a minute there, so. Oh, you could use, you could probably use word left for claws. Um, claws are high impact. I would recommend something a little bit more substantial. I know people use Sculpty a lot, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I see a lot of breaks with the Sculpty claws. And I'm always like, well, why, why did you, why did you use your claws and do that? Like they bang it on things and stuff. I've actually seen somebody break a wine glass with their sculpted gloves. So um, they, they do have, they are pretty strong. Like when you hit them in a certain way that they break or something. I should probably look at the camera more often. Okay. Yeah, so these are all resin bases here. Um, if you go from foam to resin, just get everything cut. Just because the cutting is amazingly long and boring. And I really I actually cut this space and I did not enjoy it at all. Probably because it was like a hundred degrees when I was cutting it. So there's that. But fur in my mouth. It's probably fair today. Because it's yellow. If I had a long tail, how would you go about making the long tail go out instead of down? So you mean like a raptor tail where it just sticks out? Yeah, you would need a kidney belt because the regular belt would just fold. I don't know what a jerky bus is. Um, is that a dragon bus? That'd be cool. Thinking about like that airplane suit that I saw. The lap guy would be a cool soda. I'm a double decker jerky bus. Beep, beep. Um, yeah, you'd need a raptor tail and you'd probably need some sort of core in there. Probably actually just foam. And I've seen a lot of them wiggle. I'm guessing you want them to wiggle and not be this really stiff piece like a rudder. So you'd want to cut vertical lines. So they're like one of those snakes that you see in the game where they kind of like wiggle a lot, like the plastic snake that you get like someone's birthday party when their mom doesn't want to actually buy party favors. Um, yeah, I have like a hair going in my mouth. Um, so you'd want to do that to probably the tip end of the tail and then just leave full foam body at the back end. And it would need a kidney belt because a normal belt would sag and fold. I even have, I have a belt that folds in half with one of my small nub tails because I've used it so much. Um, you probably want it stitched to the kidney belt too, or suit with like a zipper or something. I have a deer suit with plenty of padding, even on the butt. Yes, it's so nice to sit in a well padded suit. And it's like I have a cushion wherever I go. It's great. Um, good at sewing. 
Yeah, they, they have anti-pill, but it's still pills. It's kind of like a myth that it's like, oh, the plastic comb zipper doesn't actually get fur in it. That's a lie. Um, it does. But uh, yeah, the anti-pill fleece does still pill. Um, I know there's rayon fleece or some sort. It's like high-end for like actual mascots, but it's really expensive. So I don't have any of that because it's like, it, it, I think it's like about the same as NFT or you have to buy so many yards of it and it's already in the triple digits. And I just, I just what am I going to do with 40 yards of neon orange fleece? Like, I do a little bad. Make a tent maybe. Shaving a suit. They have these little guards for the shavers. I'm not going to click on that. It looks like it goes to Facebook. I don't know, I'm not gonna click on that. So, um, I'm guessing Dracobus is that funny dragon thing that I've been seeing around. Um, it's nice. I don't really know what it looks like besides the face from DVC. Um, how do you, shaving a suit, okay, so you have, when you buy the clippers, they come with little clipper guards and they read like, one eighth, there we go. One fourth. That's how far they can shave. And if you're really worried about it, you can use the bigger guards first. I don't even use guards. I just come in and go, meh, 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 because I'm impatient. And I mean, it looks pretty good. And like the bird here, Pop Tart Bird was shaved. There's like a little soft spot. And this guy was also shaved. And then I took a shortcut with the shark. If you don't like shaving at all, just get short pile fur, then you don't have to shave it. I used fur that you would use for a plushie on the shark. It's like, so I don't know if you can really see, oh, the camera really hates this. So it's like plushie fabric that I used on the shark. And it, it's great if you don't like shaving. It still sheds though when you cut it. It has an elastic component and I would not recommend this for a beginner unless you've made plushies previously and work with fabric like this, just because it's got a little bit of a smaller learning curve. Like first you, you could like make so many mistakes and nobody will ever see it because the fur pile will cover it. This won't cover it. And this will actually show and I think yeah, you can even see an area where I missed the seam on the sewing machine and I had to come back and ladder stitch it. So it, it will show a lot, but you don't have to shave it. It's very important. I don't like shaving. I Actually, that's, shaving is one of the worst parts because I hate it. You can fix... Yeah, you can. You can also like brush your fleece too with like a soft bristle broom brush. I don't know, I don't have any fleece-faced suits. I usually make them and sell them because they're cheap. Fleece is cheap, I love it. You can use it for everything. Sometimes it does stutter. Sometimes I stutter. Um, intermittent video issues. I wouldn't know anything about that. It says recording. I'm not recording, am I? I really want to see this and be like, the yeah, past you was terrible. The session is being recorded, but if that's a problem, I can have Blitz delete it. No, you can keep it if you want. I don't mind. Cool. Yeah, I was just curious about the video because we've had some, some people are having issues and some aren't. So I was curious if anyone else in here was having the issues. Well, are they... Are they actually enabling it? In they the are. Yeah, some of them are. Some it's, sometimes it's okay. weird. Sometimes it's not. It's was, not you. I think you seem to be coming through fine. So just just curious. Me, yeah. the first time I didn't, I had it disabled. I was like, well, why isn't anything working? And he's like, damn computer, you're so old, you can't do anything. But no, it was, it was user error. Because I'm not great. Actually, yeah. So back to washing and padding. Do you have any tips how to wash a body that have? Why isn't it detachable? Why would, why would anybody do that? What do you think? Oh, gosh, I really don't know. Is is the padding like 
in a liner or something. There's no zipper on the liner. Like all my suits, all the suits that I'm thinking about, even ties, the one that I made, had you could actually pull the leggings out with the padding in it and like take out the padding and then just throw the leggings in the wash. So it's like Under Armour leggings. So I don't actually have to wash Tide as frequently because she has a bunch of, she has an extra layer that gets the wash. And so she still smells like oil as I've been talking about because I used clippers that were actually my dad's and he uses this four in one oil on his clippers. So like everywhere I shave still smells like four in one and it's been six years and I can't get rid of it. So it's like, whatever, I'll accept it. It's fine. It's, it's a different smell. Nobody has fursuit that smells like oil. Everybody has water. <laughs> Crackers. Fruity tooty. Some sort of alcoholic drink, I think. Where it's a dance. I don't, I don't have any tips on that. I would just say if you have any sewing expertise, find an area where you could probably like cut it and then stitch it up later and remove the padding and then wash it. Because when you wash the padding, it takes forever to dry, but it also clumps up. So you might have like tumor legs. That's, that's just the term. Tumor legs where you have these weird bulges in your legs that aren't actually in the right spot. And I don't even know if your padding is polyfill or foam because that would help. Um, I don't know if you've done a review, you should probably include that they didn't put anything in it or maybe that was you and you just didn't know. And you're like, oh no, what's this? What's happened here? What did I do? Um, Yeah, so if you have padding that isn't removable and the feet are attached and you can't find anything, if you're willing to take that, the risk of, I guess, cutting the, I hope there's liner in there and it's just not foam just floating in space um, to take the padding out. That would be the way to go. And then you would just ladder stitch it back up. Or if you're really like, go get it, just put a zipper in so you can do it for later. Like I have most of my suits I've actually altered except for maybe Faraday. I haven't really altered that suit much. Um, yeah. Wait. No, when, when you get a kidney belt, it's to attach to the tail. It's not going through the tail. I don't think I've ever seen a tail with the belt loops. Like, because this is for a normal belt. It's like an inch, and it's also elastic, so it stretches. But, like, you don't get a kidney belt to try to pass through these loops. You get a kidney belt to attach at this point here. So the tail is attached like this on your body instead of like this. And it's usually, I think they usually sew them on. I've seen people with zippers, which I have not yet mastered. So I still think it's witchcraft. Um, but uh, yeah, the kidney belt is more for like actually physically attaching the tail. Like you can pull it through the fursuit tail hole just fine because it collapses down, but it's not it's not for like weaving through our pre-existing belt loops because I've never seen belt loops that big for a kidney belt and kidney belts have a variety of sizes. It's not like a belt where it's usually just an inch thick or two or one and a half inch thick depending on the belt or the dress belt where it's like not even an inch and it doesn't do anything. So why did I buy that? Okay, child-proof boat loops. Use nylon. Uh, you have to like melt the nylon when you cut it with like a with a candle lighter, I guess. I'm not sure what it is. It's got like a nozzle at the end, and fire shows up there, which is good because I don't like fire that much. But um, if the kid tugs on it a lot, I would just say make it make it a stuffed tail with no belt loops. Yeah, I'd be like, here's something for you to pull on, child. But like, I guess you're not talking about like day-to-day life. I have a kid sister and they're always pulling on my tail. I think you're just talking about, hey, like I go out and I see kids and they're always pulling on my tail. Um, you could get reinforced elastic. This is not reinforced, um, where it's ribs going horizontally. And that's pretty good. 
you can do, you should do more than two. You should do like three or four if you can. Belt loops, just like all in the same area. So it's like really hard to put on, probably really hard to take off. Um, that's why you get a handler. Yeah. And you don't want kids pulling off your tail. That's rude. It's, why aren't their parents doing it? I'm recording now. Oh yeah, for fennec foxes, they have nice big ears. Um, probably on the same size as Faraday's ears for every time you walk through a threshold, you hit both sides and you're like, what was that? So you'll want a bigger base at the bottom of your ear and then you gradually thin it out as it tapers up to the top. So, like a pyramid almost. That does that make any sense? Uh, I would use a uh, foam and foamies and EVA foam. EVA foam for like the inner part of the ear as you go up, and then cut it off like halfway because you want them to wiggle, right? Those ears wiggle. I have slayed so many people with those ears. It's it's a good feeling. Here's a photo of my deer. Yeah, removable padding. It does get funky after a while. That's why after you use it at a con and you come home, you're technically supposed to take them out and air it out and not be like, well, I cleaned it at the con and we're done. Um, you could just replace the padding. I think there are a few makers that actually make padding for you to buy and use. I don't know if they'd fit your fursuit. Um, and they're also kind of expensive. Uh, I made one with foam that's basically glued to leggings. It's not my finest moment, but they work. Um, they were supposed to be magnets, but I had a magnet problem with the magnets. They kept breaking. Um, and then the client said, I'd rather have them glued than deal with all these magnets. And I was like, okay, fine, we'll just glue it this way. But um, you take them out and air them and you can, you can't really, can you clean foam? You can clean foam a bit. It's more of like airing out and spraying and then airing out again. It's not like you put the foam in the wash and you wash it. Um, it's, it, it falls apart. You just make sure you don't put it in direct sunlight because the sun will destroy it because that's what the sun does. It destroys everything. I don't know, I don't think I would replace the padding myself because I'm cheap. I would probably just make the padding. I see a deer, oh dear. EVA foam is amazing and it's somewhat heat activated so you could actually like warp it. And foamies are technically like EVA foam that's smaller. Um, let's see, both birds have EVA foam ears. Uh, Faraday has EVA. No, actually, I took that off. No, he doesn't have EPA. How would you touch? Okay, so lap ears are easy because that's just basically a seam at the top of the head that's horizontal, and then you just have the ear come out of it. That's how you do the ear. Um, beagles would be the same, except I think their ears are like down here more. So you would just do a horizontal seam at the base on the head part. And hopefully it's the same thickness and width. Sometimes it's not. So you just cut a little bit more and it drops down. Wow, you came in two places. He's upside down. That's talent. I wish I could do that. Yeah, the sun does destroy everything in Florida. Oh, what's the best way to make feet paws? Me? Buy it from somebody else. I actually hate feet paws because there's it's it's like hand paws. There's a lot of fiddly detail and then nobody ever sees it. So it's just like, why did I do this? Um, I have a link in my uh, profile that lists to a document that I was supposed to be answering these questions to, but I obviously didn't do that. But it has a free foot paw pattern, I think, by either Mango Island or Curl Works. I can't remember. 
but there is a free pattern that you just print on the A4 paper stand and you can like, hopefully you're better at it than I am because I didn't print it off right. It was like 16 sheets one way and seven sheets down. And I was just like, these weird, huge. But yeah, so there are free patterns for feet paws. I just recommend doing outdoor ones because otherwise you have to make sandals and or buy sandals because you're always worried about walking with your pretty bottom peats, little peat beans out on the grass. I mean, not that it ever happens at most cons. Megacon, it will probably happen because the con space is not where the hotel is. MFF didn't really have to worry about it, but Faraday has outdoor feet anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, so if they got huge ears, you just, you, so what you do when you tape it off, you'll make your ear pattern, which will be paper, hopefully. And then you'll just, it's like pin the tail on the donkey. You'll be like, I want it here and I want it draped down this way. And then you'll just attach it. Hopefully you'll mark, remember to mark it because sometimes I forget to mark things. And I'm like, oh no, but um, you'll mark it. And then you'll like, do some alterations on the way it hangs. Maybe you want it to hang here or here, or maybe you want it on the side as opposed to up here. And then you'll edit the paper, how you want the ear to look. And then you just gotta like mark it here. And then when you flip the tape out on the inside, make sure to mark it on the inside since that's the side that you want to be facing up when you do the pattern transfer. Oops. macro but yes it was it was huge they were like just do it this way and i'm like i hate i hate the printer i really hate the printer because i can never figure out what i'm doing on the printer like i will I do the eyes for the semi-realistics and i will like be like okay so this pixel wide equals an inch right and i'll print it on the printer and i'll be like this big and it's just like okay i guess i need to really like make it smaller it's it's i said some. I've actually gone to Home Office Depot and had them printed it. They're like, can you print it at this point? I just don't know what's going on. And sometimes the printer doesn't even want to print for me. It's like, I'm on, but I don't want to work. Floors are always dirty, always. They're, the floor is lava. Yeah, no, I have three to four year old indoor feet paws and they don't look that great on the bottom, but at least I used vinyl for the beans, so that looks actually new still. I have minky ones too. I made sock paws once. I made them off of literal sock paws and that was a mistake. But I guess learning experience. I also did the stencils and I put them on the wrong feet because I'm just not sick and I'm just like, oh, well, I'm just gonna go with this. I could fight it. I could fight it, but would it be worth it in the end? And it's no. What are people about cleaning? Yes, magnetic feet are a Christmas miracle. Also, I think they're witchcraft because I still haven't personally figured it out. So I'm like, yeah, witchcraft. But I, I, I do want them. I low key want them. But if I have two pairs of feet par on one of my suits that I bought from Corgi Lope, and she has some of the best feet par I've ever worn. But I barely wear the feet paws. I barely wear the suit. I mean, it's hot in Florida. That's why. Um, yeah. Once you go into the fur pile, you don't come back out. Yeah, and sandals are okay. Sometimes they kind of drag on the suit, and sometimes you get like you make feet, and they turn out to be custom feet for the sandal makers. So it's like they have to use a different pattern. So it's it's always like, well, I made these suit feet for myself or whatever. Um, there's some really nice padding online. Like I use two sheets of EVA foam and that, that doesn't cut it. It's nothing like an actual shoe sole. So um, the indoor feet where they're just sock paws. I mean, I guess they're great but they're not really like shoes at all. So I really, my fursona is just a fursuit with no feet paws and just sneakers. That's what it is. I, I think I walked around MFF. No, it was foie. I walked around M foie like that 
And someone's like, oh, I really like your persona. It's great. Like you have hands and shoes. And it's like, yes, this is my persona now. How expensive feet paws or sandals? Like I, you can get sandals from Russia for cheap, but the shipping kind of like disappears between Ukraine and America. Like they don't really record it. So I, I know because I'm currently waiting on a skull from the Ukraine and it shipped out a month ago and now I'm, I don't know. I, I hope it shows up in October. Magnetic feet paws. Um, I only know of one person that offers them. So I don't really know her prices because I am currently not looking to buy a fursuit. So I didn't really do that. But uh, Spirit Panda Suits, she makes these really nice mano kits. She has magnetic feet paws and I believe she's going to open up for commission soon or she's already opened up for commission. I don't uh, they are very nice, but I think they're like upwards of 200 to $300. And um, that's how feet paws are. And that's why I don't usually make them with partials either is because I'll have a six foot man buy a partial and I would have made a foot paw for like myself or maybe based off of my dad and wouldn't have fit. So it's, I don't do feet paws with partials. Yeah, so if you know someone who's cheaper, then definitely go with it. Yeah, from indoor and outdoor. Yeah, I think why they're so expensive is that the indoor paws are a lot of work. Anthro feet paws. Aren't they already anthro feet paws? I'm confused. Is it like toony or semi realistic? Yeah, what do you mean by anthro? like super high, low, high, highly realistic feet paws or like, now I'm thinking of dog feet and I'm like, dog feet are so weird. Does that mean you wanna come up and talk? Okay, yeah. This microphone doesn't actually work. Yeah, you can real quick. Now, is this for the mod to like handle or do I click on it? You really please? I clicked on something and then everything disappeared. Hi. Okay. This is my bodysuit. It has no leg padding currently, but pretty much these are his thighs and his legs get cut off right here. And. Okay. You haven't gotten the legs no, I do. finished? But his legs are the bottom half. So this is his football. Oh, okay, I see. Like, okay, so you have you have a digi boot. Yeah, pretty much. That's like what. Okay. That's what I was trying to explain. So that's the anthro foot. Yeah, it's just the the bottom half. So pretty much a digi boot. My bodysuit, my whole like shin would be exposed. <laughs> yeah, get some black under armor, right? The legs are black. Yeah. Black Under Armour, just whatever. Well, he's- You probably want to add some fur to the calf then. You're gonna have to jump up. Yeah, it's really You're already dressed for the convention. I think that's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, you got, I think Kigus are hotter than fursuits. Um, yeah, they, they, eh, I have like the AC all the way up right now. So, yeah, my help. So, if you're worried about your shin shin showing, you could probably get extra fur that either tucks into the boot or tucks into that leg there. Yeah. I would add some to that, I guess. You probably put magnets in it. Little chunk right here. 
that kind of yeah it, but when i like squat you can see the, the chin post up you have a squat test for the fursuit uh yeah that's always great so it's like am i am i gonna rip out my butt when i squat we need to know like what if you don't know and then I would I'd put a good set in the crotch, so usually it's a yes, you can squat in in the fursuit. Biggest um, the the padding does shift around though. I mean, I don't think I've ever been in a suit that doesn't have shifting padding when you squat. Mine doesn't except for a plant grade suit, which which is like ideal after having like three digi suits. I'm gonna go back to plant grade. I love by padding. I love Digi too, but it's just cleaning it. I don't really like cleaning. Yeah. That's, that's, hi, I don't like cleaning up after shaving. I don't clean, like cleaning up after cutting. I don't like cleaning up after fursuiting. I don't like cleaning up after airbrush. That's airbrushing. Oh my gosh. It's terrible. I do five minutes of airbrushing and it's like an hour of cleaning the airbrush. Airbrushes are just Why do I airbrush? Way too much maintenance. But there too, my, mine is finicky. It, it only works with water. If I put paint through it, I have to actually milk it. You have to like dilute, di dilute, dilute it. I have airbrush paint that's already diluted, but I do dilute it with more water. But um, so I have to like unscrew the back end and take the needle out and kind of push it through to push the paint through. Yeah. I think I put too many uh, paints that weren't airbrush qualified in it. Yeah, I, I didn't, I don't think yeah. the zipper, when I had the zipper on the back, like. Uh... I don't know. I always put my zippers on the front because I'm always that one person that always ends up suiting up everybody else before I get suited up. Yeah. So I have to suit up myself. Uh, okay, so this is Beaver, this fur, but then his yeah. stomach is minky, so a zipper would be very awkward. You could put it down the side. You could do the side one here. I have a friend who has a boob window. She just has this part where it takes off and it's just like a scoop neck fursuit. <laughs> kind of jealous about that. Great way to cool off. Just yeah. He's already Yeah, he's already been born though, so there's, there's no going back now. <laughs> Yeah, so the person asking about uh, what, what you can sew in the sewing machine, you could probably run beaver through a normal sewing machine. Get a walking foot. You'll need it. What's a walking foot? Um, it's like an extra piece that kind of like walks the needle along. Otherwise, it'll just get stuck in one spot and you'll have a nice little knot in the fur because it won't be able to pull. Yeah. I no, no, there's a weird like ladder thing that pulls the fabric through as the needle comes down. And the problem with fur is it gets caught in this part. So the needle's just like, yeah, we're gonna make a huge mess right in this one spot. Yeah, it just gets stuck. So when you get a walking foot that it helps pull it along. But I, I still would not run Lux Shag through the sewing machine ever. Unless you've shaved it prior. I just got my singer so I, sewing machine. It's been through people. Yeah, I don't know. We have, I think a project runway brother sewing machine we also have a serger which is nice but i can't surge anything because it doesn't go through the fur doesn't go through beaver's a living mess I, I... Beaver's, beaver's really thick it's a really thick pile though it's, it's short but thick so the problem with the thickness is it will get stuck in the part it's that pulls slippery. the fabric through super slippery what it's also super slippery like doing the applique on the the, the paw pads a nightmare especially if you try doing it with vinyl oh yeah i don't use my eyes minky i have all this black minky i've got to use it i have minky from 2016 that i got and i still haven't finished using so i use minky at any opportunity i have oh um, yeah i've always preferred like minky teeth minky claws minky paw pads everything and i found I, out do, how those magnetic feet work I think I know how magnets work, so I don't need to know. Yeah, I think I figured it out. It's just like making a. 
like a magnetic prop, like a, a suit with those little sprouts on their head. Those were clips. I mean, I do magnetics just fine. Like, Pop tart bird is magnetic horns. And so does Mr. Broken Head have magnetic horns. Oh, they're repelling. Also repelling. Okay. Horn power. <laughs> That's a weapon. <laughs> It's very unbalanced because this is 3D printed and super light, and this is a resin chest. Yeah, 3D printing is lighter, but... 3D printing's great, but I hate sanding, so I'm probably not going to use a lot of it. Yeah. I, I always get my, like, eye bases from PVC or West Custom creations. I had one bad experience with West Custom Creations, and I never went back. Oh. I bought something from her, waited a month or so, emailed her because her Etsy account disappeared. And she's like, oh, you still want that? And it's like, I paid for it. <laughs> yeah. Like, why would you even ask me that? And then she said I shipped it, but she never gave me an, uh, a tracking number. So usually when they say, oh, I shipped it, but they never give you a tracking number, I don't think they actually shipped it yeah. because they have no evidence. Probably not. So I got a refund. But I'm just like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bother. The whole experience was, just, it was, it was obvious she didn't care. So it's like, why I could commission somebody else. Yeah. I could commission a local maker, which I did. But yeah, they're in California. So they're not technically local. I'm pretty sure if you just carved out a hole for two very strong magnets and then just use... The problem with that is you need to do it prior to making the foot so you can actually like secure them in with like epoxy or something. Yeah. Because if you have a really strong magnet versus glue, the magnet will win. Yeah. Well, I should have brought the Rex out. This magnet is actually a countersink magnet with a screw on it. Not that the screw really do, does much, but then I also cover it in epoxy sculpt. Um, and this is just for something else. Um, I have a T-Rex head where I put foam in the hollow Halloween horn. And then I use the two pick, two mix stinky epoxy glue. If you use two mix stinky epoxy glue, please wear a wet respirator. Actually, if you use any heavy duty glue, please wear a respirator. Um, same with shaving, wear a mask. Just a dust mask would help because those, those fibers get in your lungs and they don't get out. Ever. Ever. They stay with you. Until you die. Well, I mean, I guess if you die and they do an autopsy, then they come out, but like not in your lifetime. No. I'm a rhino. You're gonna die. I wanna make a rhino. Burn you. That kind of sucks though. Yeah, oh. I mean, yeah. if you have a mustache or a beard, you're going to die with fur on your face. <laughs> Too far to fuck. I, it's not, I guess it's not really fur. Maybe, maybe, uh, you know, you'll breathe in the fur and then the two-part epoxy will kill you. Who knows? I had a brief moment of epoxy. sorry. No, it, I had a brief moment of panic when I had to look away for a couple minutes. I come back and you're holding that horn, and I'm like, "Wait, please tell me that's a horn and not something else." <laughs> it's my nose. Yeah. I'm a rhino now, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna be a triceratops if I had three, or I could just be that one with the can opener nose. Yes, and the dinosaur with the can opener for a nose. Oh. Yeah. Okay, now that that's recorded for the history of history. Um, also, seeing there's something from Megan in the chat, and I just want to pop in for a moment. Um, I don't do fursuits, but I have done cosplay, and please... Ew, she had a bezoar. Uh, what? Yeah. Please, 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 please always wear a mask when you're doing something like that with the fur or with an airbrush or painting or something, because, yeah, it can get... You get that all in your, in your lungs and your nose, and that is really, really bad stuff. Yeah, I did not use a mask yeah. with the airbrush. I was like, it's pointing this way, and I'm yeah. if, here. If you're in a well-ventilated... 
Probably yeah, so. if you're in a well ventilated area, the mask of the airbrush doesn't matter quite as much. If you're especially if you're using acrylics because they're water based paints. Um, when I'm doing when I'm doing mm -hmm. cosplay, my biggest thing is that I prime EVA foam with something called Plasti Dip, and that's ex uh, basically spray on oh, plastic, yeah. and so it's extremely toxic, and you have to use the mask. Um, and anything like that that has particles that'll be released in the air, sanding EVA foam is another big one. So it's similar to shaving the shaving the suit. It's really you should wear a mask when you're doing it. I hate sanding. Raise your hand if you hate sanding. Okay. I need to cosplay once. Yeah, well, um, most things are not supposed to be inside your body and therefore are toxic to your body. So there's that. Yeah. It says it on the thing, do not ingest. You love sanding? Quick, let's everybody commission him for sanding projects. I have some horns that need to be sanded. Uh, would you sand them for me? Okay, well, th those were my digital. I was going to say free radicals. That is a nice foot paw. Yes, um, just want to make sure we get to all the questions. And again, I've looked away for a moment. Yeah. Uh, did you have a chance to talk about the machines that you recommend? Um, there was some stuff upstream about. I don't. So, um, I use a. Yeah. 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 So I don't actually. I use a machine for like app case for the pop pads and for like for that's got pile listed in like cm and millimeters. I don't actually use it for any of this stuff back here because I do that by hand. So I'm going to say if you do get a sewing machine, get a walking foot because it will help feed the fabric through and not get stuck. But um, try to stick to stuff that's not as thick pile and or ask a maker who actually uses a sewing machine. We've also got Jonathan everything. trying to hop on video, so I will attempt to get them on and I will. Okay. There. Jonathan is now on twice, just like I was. Let me see. I will remove one. Wow, John, I'm talent. going to attempt to remove one of these. There you go. I see something. Uh -oh. Are you removed him entirely? Uh, Jonathan, are you still there? I can't believe you did that. I don't know what's up with this with this thing today. Uh, Jonathan, try reconnecting. You may have to refresh the window. There we go. All right, here we go. I will not do that this time. I actually have two webcams too. There's one built into the laptop. Doesn't work. There the you time. are, and I'm not going to attempt to remove you this time. Okay. Yeah, try not to remove him. Yeah, because he's going to show us something. I did these. These are um. Well, this is this is a fuzzbutt head, but these I sanded myself. I I grew up from my dad painting cars and sent and having to do prep work and all that, so I'm used to this. This is all like spray painted and stuff. Is that 3D printed and then you sanded it down? Yeah. Yeah, that's what those horns are. But I was like, I got to a point where I was like, I'm tired of sanding this. <laughs> They're not going to pay for the sanding. So why should I sand? Well, it's not that hard. You use about three different grids. But eh. like I said, with yeah. painting and stuff, it's all in the prep work. We don't. Don't you have like a sanding machine though? Oh, no. I just did this by hand. Yeah, I was like, mm, no. Um, also for the airbrushing, you said it's getting hard. Have you cleaned out your airbrush? I've cleaned it out. I've cleaned it out more than I've used it, if that makes any sense. I think I just messed it up by trying to put glow you know, with like a thinner it. Yeah, I have a thinner and everything. I think it, says, it says not to drink the thinner, so don't drink it, guys. I have a question. You, I, I posted this earlier, but do you have any tips for like painting like these kind of eyes? If you've already mounted them, and well, used no, I've only like tacked them in with hot glue. I haven't like fully mounted like. Mounted. You can use acrylic paint, but I actually just use E six thousand and have printed eye backings. No, because I, no, I mean like paint, eyes. like paint, because I know the paint like the eye design mm -hmm. behind on the back. Just use uh, acrylic metallics. Some the people metallics like use like nail, like nail paints. Um, I haven't used nail paints on that application. I've used it on the resin, but I haven't used it on the actual acrylic. 
I would have to Google and see if you. I've seen some. I've seen some people doing it. It was like, but it's just it's so many layers of of detail. It's like oh, I really have to play more. Oh, that's what happens when you have to paint them. So if you're gonna use just normal paint, use metallics because they they have a much better sheen. They'll make it look better. They'll also, I just more, take the easy way out and just get uh, draconic night eyes. Yeah, I'm waiting on a set that I ordered in June. Because when are they gonna? Come? These are gonna glow. These glow. This is the the DVC jaw set I painted. Yeah. With um, I painted this. Okay, so I had them do this in okay. uh, transparent. Well, not true, but but semi opaque, and it actually glows blue. Let's see if we can get. All righty. Oh, I hope my face is not showing. <laughs> Uh, it was. But I actually painted these. I painted this black here. Okay. And then I went with the light pink, and then I watered down a deeper red, and I um, washed that onto it, and then I cleared it. Okay. So that uh, way you can get. Okay. Even more veining in yeah, we, there. We can hear Jonathan. Can you uh, pause for a sec? I think Tempest also had a question he wanted to get in, and we're almost out of time, so I want to make sure you got that question in. Okay. Thanks. Okay, yep. so okay, this is my first this is my first suit. It was made by um Crystal Cat. Actually it was yeah, it was made by Crystal Cat. But I gotta show you one thing. These guys were made by um um like like um some sort of creator from Etsy. And what the problem yeah. of my fir my first suit was, it had some sort of like, you know, like like before it had the eyes with the hearts hearts in them but i had to replace them with the um with these eyes but those were like out of out of order because i had to move the eyes like in a different you know put position or something like that so what i also were they too big for the hole what i what i know what i noticed the issue of the other thing was like i to have them like this like see where like see where these um these were like like these were not sewn correct correctly as I um is that a liner? Well considering considering that it's considered not a liner, but um um okay. I'm sorry, I cannot speak that much English. So Okay. Yeah, and I presume I presume that you know these um, stitches were like custom, were like designed like in a poor way. Like I don't know if Is I don't that know. Fleece? I don't know if I don't know if she did it on purpose or not. But you know, you. these were not supposed to be like you know this was not supposed to be like that. But but what I had to do what I had to do was to um what was to um put put some um glue in one of the in one of the eyes to make it position correctly because they were out of order like like i wanted them to so yeah that was one of the issues of my first my first suit. your eyes look like they're uh, oval shapes that you put with the egg part facing towards your nose well, that was the that was the maker that had the um design in place, but you know, I just feel like, I just feel like you know the creator the maker could have done like a better better job making the suit like well, you know professional. It depends if this was like their third or fourth suit, and if you bought it cheap, sometimes you get what you buy, like what you pay for. Also, is that liner fleece? Did they put fleece inside your head? Well. If it's if it's fuzzy, then I decide then then it it's considered like you know fleece in a way, but you know it's just not you know. It's, so it's like cotton instead. Yeah, a yeah it looks like a heavy a duty cotton, cotton or a fleece. Oh, yeah. well, cotton. I, I still don't understand why people put liners. I mean, like I get it for comfort, but like for cleaning, it's just a mess. It's it's like if you have a liner, wear a baklava because you'll be able to clean that. The liner you won't be able to clean unless you tear it out of the head. And let me just jump. Which is bad because yeah. stuff is sewn into it usually. I'm gonna just going to jump yeah. in here and point out we got five more minutes for the panel. So uh, if you guys have any more questions, please put them in chat um, or not. Five dollars. Um, so, 
Uh, uh, Ree, if you uh, do, uh, do you have anything to finish up with? If we don't get any more questions specifically, if you need to contact me, I'm on Twitter at u r b o r s. That's just the easiest way to come and contact me. Also, my profile does have that link to that some resources. Does any one of you have Telegram? Uh, Telegram's only for friends. So what was that? Uh, can you, you read him? I'm putting that in the chat um, and I'm going to, um, yeah, I'm just Tempest and Jonathan, anything. if you don't have more questions, I'm going to take you off of video. That's all right. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you. So, Re, I guess one question I would have to finish up. What is something that you would recommend people look for when they're commissioning a fursuit um, in general? Is there something that you would you would want oh, them to look for? Yes. We have this great resource called Fursuit Review. And I actually know the person who runs it. And it's basically a comprehensive thing like price. Do they take payment plans? response you know how long did they meet their deadline did they match your suit suit sona reference it's like all right there so most makers usually have a reviewer or two um some makers change their name a lot and that's usually indicative of bad reviews because if you had a good name and you had good reviews you wouldn't need to change your name right not all the time but some um but yes, we have Fursuit Review, and there is actually a database called Git Fursuit, which has makers from all over the world listed, and you can click to see if they're like open for commissions or not. Um, I actually got a client through that website, so it does work. But that's, we have those two, I guess. I gotta post my Twitter handle again. Yeah, there we go. That's my Twitter handle over there. And there's the Google Docs. And disregard the owner's name of the Google Docs. I made an RP account on Google Plus. Um, the Google Docs looks like it is a private link, so people will have to share oh, request access. Set it up. <laughs> Let me see. How do I change that? It says only people add oh. Yes, anybody with the link can view. Let's see if I can share again. Sorry, guys. Is there an error? Is it private now? It is open now. I can see it now. There's a. It looks big blank at the top, but when you scroll down, you can see the stuff. Yeah, I was gonna like fill out the answers and stuff, but did it do that? It happens. Well, thank you very much, Ray. Um, got a lot of. You're welcome. I set up. So, how do we leave? I can disconnect. So, uh, the panel room will stay open for a little bit, but I will disconnect all the panelists, and that should do it. And nobody else can come in. So, thank you very much. Thank you.